Hey everyone, it's Matthew uh, here at Earthworks. Today we're going to talk uh, a little bit about fertilizers. There are a lot of choices out there and I know that if you don't regularly fertilize, if you're not already uh, accustomed to using fertilizers, that it could be a little daunting uh, when beginning to think about what kind of fertilizers to use because there are so many choices and so many options out there. And I'm going to break down um, the difference uh, between the synthetic fertilizers and organic fertilizers. Also going to be talking about uh, solid forms of fertilizer versus uh, liquid or water soluble. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, the main difference between synthetic fertilizers and organic fertilizers are that synthetic fertilizers feed the plant. And organics, although they feed the plant, they're also, um, and more importantly, feeding the soil and the, um, the, the bio-complexity um, that you want to exist in the soil that may or may not already be there thriving. Um, but with organic regimens, you can create a thriving ecosystem in the soil. Just like we want to have a thriving uh, gut flora that digests our food in our stomach, we also want to have a complex flora in the soil as well. And uh, this can happen with organic gardening a lot easier, uh, not as easy with uh, synthetic uh, fertilization methods. But both will feed the plants and you will get dramatic results by using either. I remember when I first started fertilizing, I was not the best at it. Um, I used both slow release fertilizer um, types like in a granular form and I also uh, began experimenting with some of the water solubles. And uh, with the granulars, I remember throwing piles of granular fertilizer next to the trunk of a tree or a shrub, uh, which was not the best place to put it. And then with the liquid fertilizers, I was, um, you know, just an extra scoop will be that much better, right? Uh, but then soon to find out that my plants were actually suffering because I was burning them with too much fertilizer. So um, first rule of thumb with any fertilizer is use as directed. More is not better. Um, the folks who make these fine fertilizers, um, they know how they should be used properly and most effectively, so the directions are very good. Um, so follow the directions, number one. Uh, number two, use it as often as it says to use it. So if it says use it quarterly, use it quarterly. If it says use it weekly, use it weekly. And your plants will thank you. If they could talk, they would sing to you. They would uh, respond uh, with a jubilant song and dance if they could because when you feed them um, you are giving them something that they cannot necessarily give themselves especially in the controlled environments that we're growing them in especially things like house plants um, things that are not outdoors or in the ground have very little input um, into the soils that they are growing in and so it is up to us the only place where plants are taking care of themselves is in nature in the forest so for me um, once I began really understanding fertilization, I first had to understand how plants feed themselves in nature and how that happens. And each scenario is different depending on which part of the world, um, which kind of system that these plants are growing in. But in a forest, the plants make their own food. Basically, they drop leaves, they drop branches. Sometimes a bird or a squirrel will fall to the ground um, and everything will compost and it breaks down and it feeds the soil and the root systems of the plants. And there is a very diverse, very complex, uh, microbiological, uh, fungal system happening in the layers of soil. And these systems work together um, to make a forest healthy. Yes, there are sometimes sick or diseased plants in the forest, but by and far, um, the forest takes care of itself without any human inter intervention or fertilization program. So. Um, if we think of what can we do at home, in our lawn, in our garden, with our house plants even, to somewhat replicate um, that system, um, the closer we can get to it, the healthier the plants will be. So there's got to be an input, and the input comes in the form of all these things here. So I have a mixture <clears throat> of both synthetic, um, organic, I have some hybrid products here that um, have synthesized foods um, blended with uh, organic forms of fertilization uh, like some of the fox farms or hybrids here. I have synthetics like a slow release in this dynamite brand. I have synthetics in the uh, Jax brand which I find to be a very effective brand. Then I have some really good things like 
earthworm castings, which are a great organic input. Um, the Neptune's fish emulsion sustain makes a really nice pelletized, slow release, concentrated compost. And then of course the Biotone, uh, which is not only a pelletized, slow release fertilizer, but also has some microbiology, some uh, fungal in there with the mycorrhizae to help kind of replicate and recreate that system that uh, happens in the forest floor. So how do I feed my plants? I'll tell you how I feed my plants. If you watch YouTube videos um, for two hours on YouTube, you'll probably hear 500 different ways of feeding plants, right? So we all have to find what works for us. But I use a program that uses a little bit of everything. And what I mean by a little bit of everything is that just like my diet for myself, if I just ate carrots, potatoes, and lettuce, I'd probably be alive. I might not be as vibrant and as healthy and as active and have as much energy as I might like as if I had a more diversified diet and I'm eating lots of different things. So that's kind of how I look at feeding my plants. I could feed them just one thing and one thing only or one brand and one brand only, but I do like to mix it up a little bit because each of these different products is like a different ingredient. It's like a different food group, so to speak, and the plants can get a more well-balanced diet. So that's how I think of it. So I start with a slow release fertilizer when I plant. So I plant with Biotone. And so when I'm digging a hole, if I'm potting something up, if I'm mixing up soil, I'm throwing the Biotone in there. I'm getting the, uh, the microbial action. Um, I'm getting the mycorrhizae in the soil and um, it's gonna help stimulate and get the roots growing sooner than later. Then on top of the soil, I like to put a shake and feed like this dynamite here uh, little pellets and I put these over the surface of the soil and this will be a very slow release. They break down slowly. On here it says for up to nine months. So I think about this once a year. I'll put this on the surface of the soil. Now you can um, find bigger bags of slow release that you can put if you're doing a garden bed that you can sprinkle on the surface but that's a nice slow release on the top. Then on the weekends because I'm a nut uh, at least uh, once on Saturday or once on Sunday, depending on my free time, I will use a water-soluble fertilizer. So in my vegetable garden, I will use an organic um, fish emulsion to feed my vegetable plants. So I will put this in either in a hose end sprayer, which I attach to my hose, or I'll put it in a pump canister sprayer that's pressurized and I'll spray because um, I could do a foliar feed, feed the foliage, and then feed the soil as well. I could drench the soil with a liquid. I do this once a week for maximum results. And trust me, when it comes to growing herbs and vegetables here, it's a race against time. We're trying to get our plants as mature as possible um, to get them to their uh, maximum production before like, the heat of summer comes, for example, with tomatoes and cucumbers and things like that. So feeding them regularly, consistently, weekly with a liquid, um, is very important to me and I get very good results by doing that. Now, with a lot of my house plants, um, some of my more exotic plants, um, some of my rare plants that I have in my personal potted collection, and trust me, I have uh, hundreds of plants in pots in my backyard, and I will use a water soluble. So, um, I don't have the one that I use. I use the Jack's um, Even Feed, which is a 20-20-20, or I'll use the, um, uh, the Blossom Booster, which has a little bit higher phosphorus for some of my blooming plants. But right here I have a citrus. They make a citrus blend. They make a palm blend. They make a house plant special. Um, all this can seem daunting, and I'll get into some of this here in a few minutes, but I use a water soluble. So it's what I call the blue stuff, okay? It's a blue kind of fine, granular, almost like a powder, um, it dissolves in water. Um, very concentrated. Please do not use more than what is um, asked of you on the back um, and it will last a lot longer and it will give the plants everything they need if you follow the instructions. So um, using the liquid once a week keeps my plants vibrant, keeps them growing, keeps them blooming, keeps them healthy. I, I look at it as kind of an insurance policy. Um, if I'm not putting into the soil, if I'm not giving to the plants something, then why should I expect for them to do much of anything? And sometimes the difference between a plant that's just surviving and a plant that's thriving is literally that weekly regimen of the fertilizer. Um, the deeper you get into this, the more you can customize it. Um, but if you are mixing in something like a biotone when you're planting, sprinkling a slow release on top after it's planted, and then doing a weekly regimen, 
Um, that's as simple as it can be. I mean, you can really tweak this as much as you want. Um, there are different formulas for different types of plants. Um, you can use a generic multi-purpose like the Jax 202020 that I was talking about, or you can really geek out and find some specialized fertilizers that are made for things like just palms or just citrus or just house plants. But as you all know, within the house plant world, there's thousands of species, right? So this is still kind of generic. So the point is, is that you can probably close your eyes and grab any one of these off the shelf and feed any plant and, and they'll be fine and they'll get the nutrients they need. It's just that over time we have found out that certain ratios of nutrients um, plants uh, prefer or perform better under when they're receiving these, but you're not gonna kill your, your citrus tree if you feed it palm food or vice versa. They're gonna be fine and you can give palm food to a house plant, but why do that when you can get one that's a little more formulated for the type of plant that you're growing? So there's that as well. So remember, the most important thing is to follow the instructions. Um, more is not better. Um, I did mention earlier about uh, me throwing down that granular at the trunk of the tree. So if you have plants in the ground, putting it at the trunk of the tree for some reason is intuitive. But where the feeder roots are, the feeder roots are actually away from the trunk. Okay, so the new young fine tips are moving toward the edge of the canopy of the plant. So the edge of the branches of the tree or the shrub or whatever plant it is, it's moving away. So you want to put the granular food kind of in a ring toward the edge of the branching uh, system of the plant, the edge of the canopy. That's where most of the feeder roots are gonna be. So that's the most efficient place to put the food. When you're using a water soluble, <clears throat> I fertilize two ways. I spray the foliage because the plants can absorb nutrients through the leaves. And then after I have drenched the foliage, then I'll use the remainder to soak the ground. And uh, the plants, um, when they're receiving a liquid fertilizer, they can immediately absorb that. When you're using a granular fertilizer, they are designed to be released very slowly. And so they get a very small amount over a long period of time. So think about it this way. If you have a sick plant and you choose between a granular and a liquid, it'd be much more effective to use a liquid when a plant is struggling or stressed or up against something um, that is keeping it from thriving because the liquid will be immediately available. The plant can use those nutrients and can bounce back a lot quicker. If you're gonna be relying on just a slow release, it could be weeks, it could be months before it gets enough of those nutrients to be able to um, get what it needs to do what we need it to do. Um, swing by Earthworks, we have a large supply um, various types of fertilizers. Um, we have the liquids, we have the solids, uh, we have the organics, we have the synthetics, we have the hybrids. We have something for just about any plant. Um, if there isn't something uh, that we have, come talk to me. My name is Matthew. I'm here Monday through Friday. I'd love to talk fertilizers with you guys. Until next time.